Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. It's good to have you along and today doing things a bit differently because I think it's time that we talk about things that are happening in our country and not brush them under the carpet. There are things happening in our country that are real and there are things that are happening around the world that are also real as well. We take Donald Trump and his presidency in the US. Yes, he has done some good things, but he has also done some silly, stupid things as well. Brexit in the UK, also very much a reality and something that is happening. But in a way, that is helping us and helping the exchange rate here in South Africa. We've had a downgrade to junk status from two grading companies, Fitch and Standard & Poor's. We are waiting for the outcome of the results from Moody's and we, we cannot afford another downgrade. Now there have been reports and stories going around of no, this is about white capital, this and white this. And, but in reality, a downgrade, any downgrade, to junk status will affect all of us and will affect each and every one of us, poor, rich, it doesn't matter what your class is, it doesn't matter what your race is, it will affect all of us. So now is the time for us as South Africans to put our differences aside, to put our race, to put our gender, and to put our beliefs and even what we support aside in the interest of a better and united South Africa. I've always said that united we stand and divided we fall. Simple little words that have so much meaning. Now, there have been things that have been said, things that have been done, and things that are, will definitely affect our country. And there have been protests that have been going around the country, people standing up, having their voices heard, and there have been people coming out and saying that that is racist, that those people coming together are wanting regime change and things like that. We should never be silenced and we should never allow a government to dictate to its people. The people have a voice and that voice should never be silenced. Never. So rise up South Africa and let your voice be heard regardless of who is telling you that it shouldn't. You have a voice and the people shall lead and government shall follow. That is something that we all need to learn and take to heart here in South Africa. Now Nelson Mandela may have passed away years ago, but what he stood for and what he did for this country as well as many other leaders should not be forgotten. There are many that are wanting to forget what Nelson Mandela did and what Nelson Mandela wanted for this country. And we cannot allow that. Nelson Mandela sacrificed his life and sacrificed everything about himself so that we can have the country that we live in today. We should never forget that. and We should never forget what he wanted for this country. As he said, it is in our hands. And indeed it is. It is in our hands. So let's rise up. Let's have our voices heard. And let's do the right thing. Keep those comments coming through on Facebook and Twitter. At Stephen Taylor SA is where you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. At Stephen Taylor SA. Go and follow me. Go and add me as a friend. And of course, go and like the uh, Talking Point Facebook page. Go and search for Talking Point on Facebook. Go and like the page. And be a part of this awesome, awesome team and awesome show. I thank each and every one of you for listening and for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to leave you with Nelson Mandela being interviewed by Vita de Sedano back in 1994 from Tenhes. Watch what he said and watch how he leads and what he has to say. A true humble leader that we so much miss in this country at the moment. Rest in peace, Tata Madiba. Rest in peace, sir, and we will never forget you.
Here is that interview then. For myself, Stephen Taylor, God bless. Take care. Mr. President, everyone in the world wants to spend time with you, and here you are with me. I must thank you. It's a wonderful honor to be back here in Tainhuis. I look around this room and I see some of the things that, that I helped create. Mrs. Boerta and I looked after the curtains in oh, the old yes. days. <laughs> do you enjoy being in Tainhuis? Yes, I do, because uh, it gives one uh, the opportunity to make a humble contribution towards uh, the national debate uh, that is going on in the country. And yes, uh, it's a wonderful experience. We were very scared in the old days, as you probably remember, Afrikaners like, like me were frightened that when black South Africans would take control of South Africa, all the old symbols, the old paintings, the old stink wood furniture would be removed, and we are so happy to see that everything is still here. Minorities are entitled to be concerned about the type of changes that have taken place in our country. The task of uh, the government and the ANC leadership would be to assure the whites uh, that change would not mean a reversal of uh, the position where the blacks will now oppress uh, the white minority and the other minorities. And I think that uh, we've succeeded, we're succeeding in addressing their fears. And uh, the Africaners themselves have played a very important contribution towards uh, normalizing the situation. President de Klerk and, uh, uh, and other prominent Africaners like Constant Filioun, yeah. they have done very well indeed in uh, ensuring that uh, all of us come together to join hands and to pledge uh, this common loyalty to our common country. Well, and you yourself have played a tremendous role. Ah, President Mandela, thank you. I appreciate that, especially coming from you here in this wonderful place. Did you meet President P.V. Boerta in this room? Yes, I met him no, no, in the room where I am. In your office? Yes, in my office. What was that experience? I'll like? show you. It was um, an experience, you know, which I shock, shook me from top to bottom, because I had expected that uh, he would uh, behave uh, in the way in which his image has always been projected, yeah. that uh, he would lecture to me and pointing a finger. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was one of the most uh, pleasant interviews I've heard. He welcomed me with a broad smile, and he served tea for me, and uh, it really was a wonderful uh, meeting. Did you have Cook Sisters with your tea? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because I sent Cook Sisters especially for you that day. Well, I hope you on got that some. day they were not there, but Cook Sisters, they say, are my favorite. Are your favorite? In fact, mm -hmm. when I reached Johannesburg in 1941, I saw Cook Sisters for the first time. Ach, yeah. And uh, at that time, I was getting two pounds a month, but I used to reserve 10 shillings so that uh, every weekend I could have Cook Sisters. <laughs> well, I shall make it a point of sending you Cook Sisters once a month. Oh, very good. <laughs> First class. Mr. President, I see the beautiful garden here at Tainais is still exquisite and so special. Do you have a chance to, as in the old days I read in your biography, you wore a straw hat at Polsmoor and worked in the garden. Do you have a chance to enjoy yourself here? Well, that is one of the things I regret very much. <clears throat> because in prison, I could sit down at the end of the day and think, do nothing else but think. And uh, I was able, therefore, uh, to see myself uh, in a different light and to be able to correct the mistakes, at least to have a plan to correct the mistakes we committed in the course of our work. And the other thing that I liked very much was gardening, mm -hmm. to create something new. And uh, I loved it very much. I spent at least two hours a day uh, in gardening. I have no time for that now. Oh, what a shame. I don't even have the time to think. I have to move from one meeting to the other. And by the time I go back home, either at 10 o'clock, sometimes at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. and even after, all that I have to do is just to go to bed. Where is your home, President Mandela? Where do you feel most at home? Well, uh, Lower Hotte now is mm. my home. Yeah. In fact, uh, I wanted 
to stay in Lower Hotim and uh, travel every day to Pretoria. But uh, there was solid opposition against this. Uh, even Mr. de Klerk uh, told me that he thought it would be risky for me to stay in Lower Hotim and uh, strenuous too. Mm, yeah. And he advised that I should stay in Pretoria. When Parliament is here, of course, naturally, I must spend my, most of my time here yeah. and be able to be in contact uh, with uh, cabinet ministers, members of Parliament, because that is very important. In fact, uh, I want to take advantage of my being here to attend Parliament, although I'm not a member of Parliament, because I can't understand how a head of state mm -hmm. could uh, be excused from being a member of Parliament where the fate of the country is being decided. Absolutely. And uh, so my own choice is that when I have time, I have to be in Parliament. But unfortunately, my program sometimes takes me away from the country mm -hmm. for the good of the country. Yeah, not really. And other times away from Cape Town to other parts of the country. Again, you know, a program which is endorsed by the cabinet. Uh, but uh, I like uh, being in Cape Town during the parliamentary session. And do you enjoy Table Mountain? Has this become a symbol for you through the years? Well, Table Mountain, as the old founder from the Buddha start. And uh, so it has got uh, that uh, uh, symbolic significance uh, for us. I went on Table Mountain uh, in December 47, and I saw Robben Island from there. I never knew that I would be an inhabitant of Robben Island for more than two decades. And um, I knew that uh, Auchu Mayo or Harry the Strong Looper and people like Makana mm -hmm. and uh, Chief Makoma were in Robben Island, but I never thought I would be there myself. Mm -hmm. I remember also when you were at Posmo, you used to come into Cape Town with, was it Lieutenant Gregory? You used to come oh, for yes, excursions that's, that's into true. town? Yes. I think I once saw you sitting in a car. I saw the police officer going to a shop. I looked into the car. I saw you. I said to myself, oh, liver art and is Nelson Mandela. And you know, I, want, I think you were eating an ice cream. Is it yes. possible? I wanted to open the car door and say, Mr. Mandela, let's run away together. Let me save you. But I was so scared you turned me down. Oh, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. I would have welcomed you. Oh, that's wonderful. I would have welcomed you. President, your memories of Christmas, because we are in the season of Christmas, your first Christmas as a child. Do you remember that? Well, it's difficult uh, to remember the first Christmas, but I remember the Christmases that were held as a child. And uh, it is the only time when uh, we could have, in the countryside, sugar. <sighs> because tea and coffee were reserved for elderly people. And, uh, but at Christmas, then they gave us, you know, some coffee and sugar. Some syrup, you know, with bread, uh, you know, with, with syrup. Syrup and bread, yeah. Yes. And, um, and then, of course, you would slaughter a sheep. Mm. Uh, that is what I remember. Did and uh, also see our mothers walking from house to house, uh, village to village, crawl to crawl, uh, eating almost the whole afternoon, you know. And uh, I still remember those days. And on the island and in prison, did you ever have an opportunity to celebrate Christmas? Was oh, yes, chance? we did. We really did. And uh, they allowed us uh, to buy a packet of sweets, a packet of fruits. That is what uh, we enjoyed there. And then uh, when uh, some of us were in A group, you could buy a lot of uh, goodies and uh, enjoy Christmas. Oh, that's wonderful. And then, of course, we used to have games, mm. uh, play competitions, and uh, also uh, organize some concerts and sing and, and so on. Do you have a chance now to enjoy laughter? Is there time to have a, a good It's joke? very difficult. Uh, the program is very tight. Mm. <clears throat> the National Executive Committee of the ANC has decided that I should work only in the morning and be free in the afternoon. Every one of them is concerned, you know, at the workload which I carry. But uh, it's not very easy because we have to consider the matter not only from the point of view of members of the ANC, especially now that we're in government. There are calls uh, which uh, are made uh, to the head of state 
and uh, which cannot be ignored. Mm. And, uh, and then we find that the program, you know, starts very early in the morning until very late at night. And uh, although at the end of it, however strenuous the day, I have got a feeling of satisfaction because one feels the warmth uh, of all South Africans and the fact that at the end of the day you feel you have done a very productive work. And that takes off the strain from yeah. you. And to relax, do you have a chance to really switch off? Well, uh, the relaxation have... comes only in the morning. When I wake up uh, every morning at 5 o'clock, I am on the road mm. for about an hour, sometimes a little more than an hour. But when I go down home to my country village, I walk to the distant villages and uh, cross uh, little rivers and uh, climb hills and so on. Sometimes it takes about two, sometimes three, even sometimes five hours. Yeah. And of just walking and talking to the people in the villages. Mm -hmm. Is this the village where you in fact built uh, a house yes. which was designed according to the house you had at the Vic Fistier? Absolutely. That this is, is a wonderful. Could you explain to me why you chose that design? Well, uh, you know, I stayed in that house uh, from uh, 1988 to 1990. I was all alone, and I became friendly to the walls of that house. And uh, it left a very formidable impression on me. And that is why I wanted to carry that impression with me to my country village. And uh, because uh, I had uh, some of the most pleasant memory in that uh, house, that cottage in Victor Fester. That is where most of the negotiations uh, with the top government team that was uh, set up for this purpose, that's where these negotiations took place and the uh, decisions uh, made about the future of South Africa. Mm, mm. And uh, so in that house in my country village, uh, it represents those memories. This year, 1994, has been for everybody probably the greatest year, in fact, the first year of the rest of our lives. You have freed all of us, you have freed me of all the guilt of being associated with things that we are now so ashamed of. There must be so many highlights for you. Do you have one specific moment in the last year that sticks in your mind as being ex totally extraordinary? <coughs> well, I don't think it's fair to personalize the achievements that we have made during 1994. Mm. Those achievements uh, would not have been possible without uh, the sacrifices that were made by a long line of freedom fighters who never gave up and uh, who came out into the streets and demonstrated, who were shot and killed by the racist apartheid police and uh, who were arrested and detained without trial, who were thrown into jail to serve long sentences. And uh, it is uh, the results of their sacrifices that is responsible for 1994. But uh, also now all sectors of South Africa have contributed, mm -hmm. including those who are on the other end, including the, those who were the oppressors. They have now contributed to the building of a new South Africa. And uh, although it is proper for us to look back and uh, to decide who exactly brought about this change, uh, but it is necessary now to look at it from the point of view of the contribution that is being made. Yeah. Because uh, it may be comparatively easy to overthrow what you don't like, but to build a new South Africa may even be more difficult. Yeah. And it is here that the contribution of other South Africans is appreciated. Is it difficult to be the world's great hero? I don't spend much time on that <clears throat> because uh, the world uh, has many heroes. I myself have many heroes. And my heroes are men and women who have chosen to bring about happiness into the heart of everybody, whatever his background, whatever his race. And uh, I am heartened by the fact that uh, we are rich in such men and women in our own country. 
Your inspirations for you, who were they? Well, it's uh, not very easy to say that because uh, we are an organization which believes in a collective leadership. And uh, it is the collective effort of all South Africans, of all human beings, that is important. Not really an individual. Mm. There are many people I admire for their courage, for their vision, for their foresight. Uh, and in this country, one man who had that vision was uh, uh, Minister Kobe Kutse. Because at a time when no member of the National Party wanted to hear about the ANC, that was the man who was working systematically with me to make it possible for the ANC and the government to sit down mm -hmm. and to talk. Mm -hmm. And I have immense respect for that man. But of course, it would not be correct to say this is my hero because I have had heroes from my own organization. It's difficult to single out one of them and to say, well, this was my greatest hero. Uh, uh, that's very difficult. Well, I'm very easy to say that you are definitely my greatest hero. Uh, well, that is mutual because you are my hero. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. President Mandela. <laughs> Tell me about the wonderful things you wear. I have to congratulate you for not wearing always the suits and the ties that the old Bruderbond used to make so famous in the old days. Do you have a certain style? Do you have somebody who designs your, your lovely shirts? No, actually, you know, uh, I just accept what I get. There is not a single article which I wear which I have bought. Ach, nie. And uh, all these are presents. And I just appreciate you know, the hospitality of people who make it possible for me to have uh, some little bit of variety. That's wonderful. Yes. You have said that men shouldn't be ashamed of being seen in the kitchen, of looking after the children, of being partner in the home. Do you find you do your own cooking with, with pleasure? Do you have a chance to do that? Well, that is one of the difficult things that I miss, mm. one of the dearest things that I miss, to sit down with your children and to listen to them, uh, their hopes and aspirations, to answer questions, to help them to grow. I miss that a great deal. And uh, now and again, I have the opportunity of calling them together uh, but, of course, they are spread all over the country, mm. and some of them, you see, they are in other parts of the world. And, uh, but uh, I like uh, sitting down with my children and grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren, because I have three great-grandchildren, -grand oh, yeah. 21 grandchildren. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I'm very rich, I'm wealthy. Well, I have two little, two little grandchildren uh, from my daughter, Billy Jean, and one uh -huh. little grandson is called Nelson Ignatius. Oh, yes. yeah. oh, very good. And I would like to one day bring you babuti. I don't know if you've ever tasted real Afrikaans babuti. No, I have once, but uh, I would like to have that taste again. I will make it specially and for you. Very good. Well, we are now on the eve of a new year. People are having their holidays, people are sharing their families, people are watching television, looking forward to a new South Africa in 1995. Do you have a message that you would like to give to the people watching us now at this well, moment? Well, it appears to me that uh, <clears throat> we are going through a very difficult period. There are a lot of problems. But what encourages me is that uh, we have the capacity to address and to solve those problems. Uh, one of the things that worries me a great deal uh, is uh, the position of uh, the South African police. Mm. The lower ranks work very long hours, more than any other worker in this country. They are poorly paid. Mm for an extremely dangerous type of work. And uh, it is my task to ensure that uh, the problems of the police are resolved. Because as long as morale among the police is very low, it's going to be difficult for us to deal with the crime.
yeah. which is worrying me. And uh, so one of the things I'm uh, going to discuss with the Minister of Finance, it is the position of uh, the lower ranks of the police force. They are doing marvelous work and that we must uh, put them in a position where they can do their work and enjoy it because uh, it is worthwhile. Yeah. And it cannot be worthwhile if they work under primitive conditions. Yeah. The conditions under which they are working are completely unacceptable. And uh, apart from that, I would appeal to all South Africans to join hands in the building of the new South Africa and uh, in promoting a spirit of reconciliation. What? <laughs>